The Spirit of Innovation is an all-electric aircraft designed to go break the world electric speed record. Awesome is an overused word, but if you put 550 horsepower in a little aeroplane like this, it's going to go like the clappers. And it does. It's an incredible, remarkable aeroplane for many, many reasons. The electric powertrain that's in the aeroplane is utterly cutting edge. It's a great aeroplane to go and break records with, but also to prove the future and the next steps for electric aviation. It's been a really long road to get to this point. It's, it's been three years, it's been countless hours designing, building and testing this fantastic aircraft. We thought, well, how hard can it be? Well, it turned out it's pretty hard, but we've managed to produce an incredible machine. I think the key thing about breaking the record is about demonstrating how fast this technology is going and therefore how soon it's going to be in all our lives. So with our aircraft, the spirit of innovation, we want to go and break airspeed records and, and crucially we want to go break the three kilometre record, the 15 kilometre record and the time to climb record. The current record for the three kilometre challenge is 213 miles per hour. We're hoping to go considerably faster than that. Over 300 miles per hour would be remarkable. We want to almost add 50% to the existing record. That's never happened before in, in, in the history of aviation record breaking. This is a, a really a tremendous challenge that we're taking on for ourselves. Electric aviation is really disruptive. It requires new technology, it requires new ways of working, it requires a lot of new thinking. How do we design a powertrain that gives us enough power to, to propel the aircraft so we have more than 500 horsepower on board? How do we design a battery that, that can hold enough energy? So our, our, the energy on board our aircraft when we undertake the record run could, could power about 250 homes. One of the great things I think we've done in this project is the way we've tackled these challenges. We've brought together really two very different organisations in Rolls-Royce and Electroflight. So Rolls-Royce, a company with a, a long history in aerospace and some great people, some great technology. In Electroflight, a young startup but incredibly agile, able to tackle challenges in a different way, able to challenge us in how, as Rolls-Royce and how we approach programmes. And really, I think this has been mutually beneficial. It's been a fantastic opportunity to work with such a traditional large-scale organisation that's got so much sort of legacy in aerospace that bigger organisational uh, perspective and that, that drive for safety has been really important. But at the same time, Electroflight has brought some fantastic, dynamic, fast-paced sort of engineering capability and, and that's how we've managed to deliver the aircraft to such a great level in a relatively short amount of time. So there's two pilots, myself and Steve Jones. Um, we come from different backgrounds. I was military, I was a test pilot in the, in the Royal Air Force, whereas Steve has come through a civilian route as an airline pilot, flying instructor, uh, incredible aerobatic pilot, and I think that combination has been immensely powerful. Uh, Phil's um, really a very experienced pilot. There's a little bit of competition between us, even though we're trying to set separate records, but we're trying to look after each other and see if the other guy's missed something that we can say, oh, you know, maybe do this differently or whatever. So Phil is looking after me and I'm looking after him. I've learnt an awful lot from him. I've bounced ideas off him. I did the first flights, but to then have him contribute, to hear his opinion, to look at things in a subtly different way, he's been an incredible contribution. We know that it's an unusual airframe. The reason that it's so fast is because it's a slightly awkward thing to fly. It's more like a jet engine to operate because the, the throttle lever is beautifully smooth, there's no vibration from the aeroplane, so it's a lovely thing to fly, albeit you've got to keep your wits about you. The motors and the propulsion mechanics the, and the propulsion management systems are fantastic. The motors are virtually silent when you sit in this aeroplane. I think the future clearly is from electric propulsion. We just need to get the um, energy storage system slightly more um, efficient, I think. So batteries at the moment are holding us back, but electric propulsion, definitely the future.
The Schneider Trophy was a race series in the 1920s and 30s where people competed to build the fastest seaplane. And Rolls-Royce was invited to come into this competition and develop an engine. And we did, we developed the Type R engine that, that ultimately went on to win the Schneider Trophy and, and secure it uh, for, for the UK. But it was a really pivotal time for us because it brought together quite a small team of engineers to just focus on the challenge of how you build an, an engine that can go as fast as possible. And when we think about what we're doing now in the spirit of innovation, where we're trying to build an electric aircraft to go break airspeed records, to really go demonstrate what's possible, we just found so many similarities, not just only in, in the objectives, but in the way that we've tried to work as well. Pilot, last person in the aeroplane, but it's so, and, I, and I, I'll get emotional saying this, so wouldn't get there without the hundreds of people, hundreds of people across Rolls-Royce, Electroflight, Yasa, the ATI, the government. I've never seen a team come together and achieve what this team has done. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. I don't think I've ever met as many clever people in one room as, we, as I've seen over the last few years. You know, we've got some really clever people and they just seem to have boundless energy. It's been a tough project. It's a roller coaster of a project. You know, we have 10 steps forward and then you get two steps back and everybody's a little bit down. But, you know, come Monday morning, they're all re-enthused um, and away they go again and they just keep, keep plugging away. What we see behind us is, is a testament to the tenacity that they have to keep going and it, it really is an amazing thing and we're very grateful to them and fingers crossed we can set some good records. It's just after 7.30 in the morning, we're going to go for the three kilometre record today, that's for sure, the weather outside is beautiful, it's a perfect day. Got my paperwork, I've been running through the sortie, running through my checks, making sure I'm ready to go, and I'm excited. Morning guys, everyone ready? Eyes in, flight brief, flight 20, three kilometer world record attempt. So standard operation, we've done this before, it's just a repeat, but this time it's a score. It'll be fill flying, 75% takeoff, 75% in the turns, full power in the runs. Main priority, safety. Just do our normal jobs, keep it safe. Any problems, we'll knock it off and have another go. All right, good luck, let's go for it. So on the day, my main responsibility is to fly the aeroplane, but there's preparation around that. I need to have learnt the route, the track, how we're going to turn off that track, how we're going to turn back into that track, what heights I'm going to be at, all the contingent factors in, in assessing that. One of the last things before I take off on the record run is a mental rehearsal where I run through every step and I run through those steps physically as well. So I'll be at the end of the runway stood next to the aeroplane and, and I physically walk through the route and I physically walk through what my hands are doing. You'll see me move my hands around, you'll see me move the throttle, and you'll see me move the flap, move the gear, pull the stick back, turn. As we get to those last moments before I get airborne, so I've run through all of my checks, so it's very procedural, because in this dynamic environment, I think that's vital. And it slows me down a little bit as well, and calms me down a little bit. 14.1, 97, 96, 97. No reds, no ambers, no attention getters. It's easy to get taken away with the journey, the briefing for the record run. You can see the excitement, I can feel the excitement. So I'm slowing that down. That mental rehearsal where I walk through tries to slow me down. And I just try and quiet myself a little bit and breathe. And confirm the prop clear. Prop is clear. Ready run. Ready run. Ready. 
Berlin ready departure. Berlin uh, cleared for takeoff. We've broken a record that already existed, but crucially, we've broken it by a phenomenal amount. I can't think of a better way of demonstrating just how fast this technology is moving and how soon this is going to be in everybody's lives than the way that we travel. I think it's clearly demonstrating that we're getting into the third age of aviation. These records prove electric aviation is absolutely and utterly here to stay in many forms. There's more to sustainability than just electric aviation. We're entirely engaged in that as well. But from this project, electric aviation absolutely works. Look what you can do with electric propulsion. You can create this amazing machine, and anybody, in, certainly in light aviation, will look at this and think, holy moly, you know, that is an incredibly impressive machine. And we and Rolls have done it. People often ask how I'll look back on this in, in 20 years. I don't entirely know. It depends what the effect of this is, but I think it's going to be huge. So I'll, I'll be proud of my contribution, proud of the team as well, and proud of what we've achieved to have actually done something. You know, my kids have asked me what I do for sustainability because it's their world. And, and I've genuinely wanted to do something and be part of a company and a group that combine to do something about it and passionately feel we have.